just, I mean, I know we're just kind of going on this tangent now, but uh, is uh, his plate curls, just his yeah. position, his, his positioning for curling a 45 pound plate. And that is one yeah. that I still, even with 35s, I, my, my wrist just kind of gives a little bit, or it's not as strict as I would like it. And Adam is one of the, there's a lot of guys that are out here and they curl 45s or they are swinging 55s around and their hands folded back like that. And I think, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think Nathan yeah. Hall um, in, a, in another episode, not mine. Um, I think he was being interviewed by grip sport Latino, but Nathan Hall had mentioned, they had said something about guys that would plate curl like that. They talk, they call it like a pizza box or like serving pizza. <laughs> so, um, so when I see the guys that are, uh, you know, they're plate curling, but they're throwing a ton of body into it. And it looks like yeah, they're yeah. serving you. They're serving some pizza it kind of yeah. defeats the it kind of defeats the application of the lift for me and when you right. look at adam do the plate curls his his wrist is locked and it is strict oh, yeah. and i'm to each to each of their own you guys you know people out there can train how they want and get whatever benefit they want but when i watch adam plate curl i don't know that there's anybody that has better form or makes it look cleaner than he does and that and that's a very tough feat for anybody that yeah. Has ever picked up a 45 pound plate, which, you know, even if you're not a big grip guy, you've at least been in a weight room a couple of times and seen some 45s. Imagine, you know, keeping a straight wrist with that thing and, and curling it. It's a, uh, it's insane. So yeah, oh, yeah. That, that's one that always stands out. I've to me. got, Oh yeah. I've got, so I've told him before, I've said, man, if you ever get around here, I got a, I got a Milo 50 pound plate that you'll probably get 10 reps with because. Oh really? It's not, it's not even as tall as a 25 pound plate. Oh, so it's real dense, real short. Or, yeah, it's real yeah, yeah. short. So, gotcha. but it's a 50 pound plate. It's two inches thick. He would curl that for at least eight to 10 reps. No problem. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's another thing about older plates and getting different size plates because you can get 45s and 35 pound plates. Like if you get um, the Dan Lurie, they're kind of like a cartoon font. They have hundreds and fifties and twenty fives. Well, the twenty fives are bigger than any twenty five you'll ever have. Okay. So yeah. when you try to wrist curl it, it is a lot harder than wrist curling a regular twenty five. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And that was some advice that Adam had given me at one point. Was basically like for plate curls was as much variety as you can get, different lengths, different weights, and just kind of fill all the gaps like you would with any other progressive training. Um, yeah. But uh, but yeah. Um, James, is there anything else um, that maybe we haven't touched on that you would like to uh, hit? Like I said, uh, I I've covered most of my questions for you, I think, and you got I got yeah. some good answers from you. Um, yeah. Is there anything no, you'd like to add at all or feel pretty well, good with I'm, that? I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Um, when you when you talk about the plate curls and having looks like you're serving pizza, I think that's an important lesson because – a lot of people, and I just had a coach bring this up. We were talking and a coach messaged me about something and we got talking and his, his explanation of why this happens was really interesting. But we talked about how someone will take an assistance exercise and immediately modify it instead of doing it the way it was intended to be done. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to do it my way. Well, how about, the guy that created it or the woman that created it did so for a reason. And that's the reason why you're doing it. So why not do it like they do it? At least figure out if that style works for you, do it for six weeks and then you can modify it. And mm -hmm. the coach I talked to said, well, a lot of times it's because it's such a good assistance lift that they're weak at it and they can't use a lot of weight. So they modify it so they can use a lot of weight which I thought was really a, a very insightful. I, I thanked him for it. I'm like, I, I wouldn't have thought of it that way. I would think it was just yeah. showing off. But so when someone's doing a plate curl and they're letting their wrist get, back, get bent back, you're more concerned about showing off how much you can lift because if you kept the wrist straight, that benefit is going to transfer over to thick bar work much more, much mm -hmm. more. So it's good that you can lift more weight, but what you've done is there's a trade-off. I don't want to waste time. So yeah. I'm going to try to do the most effective version of whatever it is I'm working on. 
So if you take on a new lift and, and it's something that is supposed to help you with something else, do yourself a favor, do it the way it was intended to be done first, no matter how, and if you're weak, you should get excited and happy because that means you need it. If you're already strong at it, then you don't need it. You can move on to something else. It's actually when we should get excited is when, when I find something I suck at, it sucks. But at the same time, I'm like, well, here you are, buddy. If you work this for the next six weeks, you know, you know, it's going to pay off. So what are you going to do? Get the work done, you know? Yeah. And then you run into the, like I said, it's not good, but then sometimes you run into the people that they kind of see that deficit and then they kind of avoid it. And then it, it starts to kind of, I guess, branch out and create bigger problems later on. Um, Then you get medial thigh bracing. (laughs) (laughs) it it can happen right um yeah that's pretty funny i didn't expect to hear that one in this interview i thought maybe that would only be sorry uh, sorry no no it's good i i thought that was only going to be maybe in a jet episode or something um but it's funny that you threw that in there but yeah it's like it, it, it is a funny topic to me because it's like everyone else that is lifting on the same setup taller shorter whatever it's like if they don't need to do it, it's like, you just take the time to, to do the thing right. You know? Um, and, and then I know we, we kind of make jokes yeah. or that, that's yeah. been a joke with the medial thigh thing or, or the handles, you know, being braced on legs. It, it is a joke, but it's like, I've seen, um, what would just say said person I've seen said person, you know, do like a sub maximal lift with the handle off their body and like, row it or shrug it. And I'm like, well, if you can do that, then you can deadlift it without pinning it on your thigh. So it's not an issue of your anatomy. It's an issue of your kind of ego lifting and you don't want to just pull 170 or 180 pounds. You, you want to pull that 200 or whatever you're shooting for. And the quickest route to that is to, Oh man, the the pin's too tall and it, it has to hit my leg. And it's like, then you squat it up and it's like, well, your hand's not really holding it. So it, it's just one of those deals where yes, if I don't know who you're trying to fool. I don't know who you're trying to fool, but it ain't me. 